Hello everybody, we are once again back with more of the old Dominion Dynasty and we are looking at some recruiting real quick. Five receivers I have targeted. Don't know if I'm going to get them all, but here we have Jesse Hill. And uh, one thing to note is I think a lot of people look at overall ratings a little too much. Uh, overall doesn't tell the entire story. The guy might not be the fastest receiver in the world, but... You might have really good hands, might have a good catching rating or something. So it's always good to look deeper into ratings other than just overall. Because one example is Marcus Massey, the freshman free safety, who's only like a 60-something overall. And uh, he's played very well so far this season. And uh, there's plenty of other examples I could bring up too, but that's really kind of a waste of time because I think I made my point already um, but Lawrence Reese four star wide receiver and then Brandon Moss one star don't be afraid to go after one star recruits because they can actually be solid um, you never know you might not always get the best guy right out the gates but here we are at Kyle Field home of the Aggies and the 12th man and it is the defending national champion Texas A&M Aggies ranked 10th in the country. Yes, they did win in year one of this dynasty. A&M won the national championship. And that was with Johnny Manziel injured for most of the season. But here, Taylor Heineke just pressured and, and badness all around happening. Second and 10, and it's a three-yard gain for Tyree Lee, who's having kind of a eh season so far. And Heineke's going to find Pinkard. He had a guy running right up to his face, and he completes it for a first down. So, Old Dominion looking to keep this drive alive and almost had Pinkard again, but good defense by Ellis there stopping the play. And Johnny Football, the 2012 Heisman Award winner, and I believe he was kind of up there in the uh, 2013 voting as well in this dynasty, but I don't remember, so whatevs. But uh, Sebastian LaRue gets the first down, so a new set of downs for number two and his offense out of the shotgun as they so often run. He's going to overthrow his receiver a little bit too much, but his receiver did have the advantage on the defensive back there, unfortunately, for Old Dominion. Third and ten, Manziel has some guys kind of pressuring him. And who is that? That's Reggie Owens. The man is a beast. Well, kind of. Anyway, so the defense actually gets a stop there. Now Connor Martin on offense is going to get things going. A seven yard reception. Second and three. Heineke's going to give it off to the left side to Tyree Lee, who has all kinds of rooms. He's going to go for 29 yards. Too bad he didn't have enough speed or enough gas to pump it to the end zone, but that's okay. Plenty of uh, great field position. I don't know what I'm saying at this point, but Larry Pinkard, a little play action. Things are going well in this drive. And third down for Taylor Heineke and he's going to find Blair Roberts who drops it although he did have guys kind of messing with him in that area. That sounds kind of weird. So it's an Anthony White field goal of 48 yards and it's 3-0 Old Dominion in the first quarter but Johnny Manziel doing a little Heisman pose in, in the middle in mid stride I should say. I don't know what's up with that. He likes to do that. Just throw his arm out there like, whoa, bro. Third and ten. Back to pass. And he's going to have a wide open Sebastian LaRue for 16 yards. He likes going to this guy a lot. Look for Sebastian LaRue to be making some impacts. But this time, it's Jaquay Williams. And it's the first touchdown of the game for Texas A&M. A high-flying offense. And after Old Dominion goes three and out, it's A&M at it again. The guy's in the maroon and white running over dudes on Old Dominion. Clearly, A&M is the better team. I mean, they're out of the SEC. They're just really good. They're the defending national champions, the number 10 in the country. I think that I don't really need to say anything else to really validate my point here. But third and nine, Williams is going to catch the ball in the flat. He breaks a tackle, and he stopped just short. It's fourth in inches, but A&M doing what they do and going for it on fourth down because they know they can get it. A quick hurdle and a four-yard rush keeps this drive going. Deep into Old Dominion territory. Manziel's going to fire 
to Seals Jones. Really big time, big receiver. He's a big dude. Uh, at least like tall, big dude tall. So here we go, the ensuing kickoff, 14-3. a and is leading and uh, things are going about what you would expect. And Javon Neal, fantastic returner for this team. Oh my goodness, 43 yards. So it was a great return. Definitely a boost, a momentum booster, uh, at least you would think. So first and 10, Heineke's going to do a little play action to Harvey Taylor. And he's going to try and find somebody open. But nope, he's going to roll out and throw this one and forces the ball. It looks like... He may have had Pinkard, but it was just a bad decision, a bad throw. It's intercepted, and it's been a problem for Heineke or, well, maybe maybe it's me. Maybe it's the guy controlling him. Probably me because I'm a terrible, I'm terrible at this game, really. So you guys have seen that. I don't really need to say anything else. First and ten, Menzel's going to throw to LaRue, who's going to lose his balance and fall on his butt for a first down. So there you go, second and six. Johnny Football is going to find his man wide open. And then Marcus Massey takes his anger out and blasts him in the face. But uh, he gets up and celebrates. So obviously he doesn't care about uh, getting blasted in the face because they're winning 21-3. On the next kickoff, Javon Neal again with an incredible return. Can he take it all the way? No. Looks like he could have done it. He may have had a chance. But another great field position story. For Old Dominion. I don't know why it's a story, but Tyree Lee out on a screen play on third down. Holy, holy something. Lee gets bounced out of bounds, but it's a huge gain of 29 yards again. Heineke's going to do a little play action on second and go, and he gets sacked. He's actually one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the country. He's third on that list, actually, prior to this game. Antonio Vaughn on third and goal after the sack. It's 11 yards. And uh, Old Dominion, a field goal doesn't get you very far, so got to go for it here. And it's Connor Martin for a five-yard touchdown. And now it's a 21-10 to 10 game. So still kind of, you know, up in there near the end of the first half. Menzel has 160 total yards of offense and three touchdowns. The rest of his team has 35. So it's 21-10 at halftime. Not bad for Old Dominion, all things considered. <laughs> When you're going up against a big-time opponent, especially one with an offense like AM. We enter the second half, and the Aggies do get the ball to start, because uh, that's usually what happens for some reason. And uh, first and ten, number two, is going to find his man, Seals Jones, who's just going to not even care about two guys here. He's going to throw them off like they're pieces of like dust or crunchy leaves in the fall time. Or whatever. First and goal, Mansell. He's going to run a dude over. I don't even know who that was. And go in for the touchdown. Uh, he obviously doesn't care. I, I think we need to see a replay. Because he totally just destroyed somebody right there. Boom. That has to be one of the most awesome. I mean, I'm sorry. This was on my own team. And uh, that was one of the most awesome things I've seen in this game. And then intercepted. And things are just going downhill really fast. Because... They're not even a minute into this quarter and already pretty, pretty much just thrown the whole game away. So, bada boom, bada bing. But anybody who is expecting Old Dominion to win this game, uh, probably a little bit unrealistic expectations. But Manziel is sacked by Dominique Gwyn Bailey. I love that guy. I do. They would get a field goal, though, so it's 31-10. to 10. And uh, this pretty much sums up the Old Dominion offense thus far. Just sputter, sputter, sputtery, sputtington. And then first and goal for AM later on in the third quarter. It's a touchdown. No surprise. I don't think you guys really need to be surprised. But uh, third and 12, Heineke's looking to throw. we got to find some way to redeem ourselves. And look at this. Larry Pinkard with an incredible catch. It was a very well-placed throw. And let's look at the replay because it was just an awesome catch by number nine. Look at this. Boom. Can't touch this. Let's get this. Boom. Can't touch this. Well, you can, but... No. Well, whatever. I wasn't going anywhere with that. And then Harvey Taylor out of the backfield. Holy, holy goodness. What is, what is, why is this lagging on me? I don't know. But uh, there you go. Second and goal. Heineke looking to throw. And what is he going to do? He's going to throw an interception. That's what he's going to do. Because obviously we're not meant to even have a chance in this game ever in the history of the world. 
All right, I needed a pause there. All right, for, for, for fourth quarter, this happened. Yeah, fifty-two yard run. It should not have that. That's just a, a better team being a better team. You know, you know how that goes. So Old Dominion still has a long ways to go before they're anywhere close to being a, like a, a considered to be like a good team. But Connor Martin gets his second receiving touchdown of the game, 32 yards. Nice little play there. I mean, hey, we'll take it. And uh, Old Dominion would go for two and fail, so 48-16 is the final. Texas A&M obviously dominates, but Heineke had 304 yards passing, two touchdowns, so really good game yardage-wise, but three interceptions, obviously not what you want. Look at all the receivers he threw to. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Well, not really, but it happens, and there you go. Johnny Manziel, 30-38, 374, three touchdowns, no interceptions, utter domination. Good player, although I find his personality to be freaking annoying. So uh, there you go, Brandon Williams, 100 yards on the dot. Manziel added 79 rushing yards and a touchdown. And uh, you can see all the dudes that Manziel threw to there. They had over 500 yards of total offense. That's just how ridiculous that was.